Hey guys, John from Dion Video Productions here, and today I'll be doing another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Let's get started. Alright guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to basically run Final Cut Pro 10 off of an external hard drive. Let's get right on into this. First of all, why would you want to do this? Well, as you can see, currently in frame we have both of my laptops. We have the one on the right, which is a normal 13-inch uh, MacBook Pro. And on the right we have the Retina model. Now the Retina model is obviously the better of the two, and it is the computer that I like to use for editing. Of course, because we have the uh, you know the nicer display, the better graphics cards, the better um, uh, the better processor, more RAM, blah blah blah. But the one drawback to these Retina models is storage, right? It, they run on SSDs, which is great because you have you know very fast read and write speeds, including for editing. However, the problem is they are a little bit limited in uh, in space, especially when compared to conventional hard drives like the normal 13-inch MacBook Pro would run on. So. The base Retina uh, laptop, MacBook Pro, only comes with 128 gigabytes of solid state storage. This here is the upgraded model, but even 256 gigabytes for me is not enough to have you know, the files I want on there and still have enough room to comfortably uh, edit with. So I basically tried to look up on YouTube some ways to fix this and if it was even possible to run Final Cut Pro 10 or basically all your Final Cut Pro 10 files off an external hard drive. This is possible, uh, however, all the videos I found on YouTube were for older versions of Final Cut Pro 10, so this video really applies to the people who are on the latest version uh, of Final Cut. So, uh, before we get into how we actually do this, as you can see currently in the middle of my screen, I have the hard drive that I'll be using for this. Now, as you can see in the shower here, I have purchased a lot of hard drives uh, in my time because I like to keep all my files up to, keep all my files, my video files, backups, blah, blah, blah. I just kind of want to have backups of everything. So. I bought this hard drive particularly for this uh, this function. Now, two main reasons. First of all, is that it runs on USB 3. Now, if you have one of the newer Macs, so the newer Retina MacBook Pros or the, the newer iMacs, they will have USB 3 built in. Basically, what that means is uh, compared to, say, USB 2, which is the normal standard, uh, you have faster read and write speeds. And of course, when you're moving big files like videos for editing, uh, this is a nice feature to have, right? Because you are, of course, downgrading a little bit in read and write speeds when going from an SSD to an external hard drive. Uh, but that's a small price to pay, I think, for all the extended storage. Now, the second reason why I bought this hard drive is because of the physical build quality. Now, this is built from metal, and the chances are you're going to be having this with you all the time because you'll be pretty reliant on it, right, if you have all your Final Cut, uh, Final Cut Pro stuff on there. Um, so this is a nice metal design, which not only looks nice with the computer, but was also a little more durable over time uh, as well. And this comes in multiple storage configurations. Right here I have the one terabyte model, uh, which for me personally will be fine for... Uh, for quite a while before I would have to say start clearing out files. So let's go ahead and uh, get on into this. So basically what I've decided to do was to start the process from step A. So we're gonna just start all the way from the beginning and go to the end live here. So let's go ahead and switch to the computer and let's get started. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and plug the hard drive into the computer. And uh, right after this, we're gonna go ahead and restore it. Now, why do this? Well, I always recommend doing this when buying a new hard drive, uh, but this particular hard drive actually came with some pre-installed software, uh, which we do not need. That's only taking up useless space. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, launch Disk Utility. This can be found under your spotlight. Uh, this comes standard on all Macs. Uh, and this is basically what we'll be using to completely erase the drive here. So we're gonna go ahead and select the hard drive. We're gonna go under erase and make sure Mac OS X extended journal is selected. Now this is the first option and therefore should be automatically selected. However, you do wanna make sure this is selected because this is what we're looking for for this. So uh, let's go ahead and name this something here uh, because this hard drive will be particular to my Final Cut Pro 10 library. Uh, we'll call it uh, Retina Final Cut Pro uh, hard drive. We'll just call it that, right? Something pretty obvious here. And we're going to go ahead and hit erase. This should uh, should not take long, so it'll take a few seconds only. All right, so as you can see, it is now finished, and it is already renamed under Retina Final Cut Pro 10 hard drive. So this is, of course, a very obvious and good name to use. So, all right, guys, so after we've uh, completely uh, erased the drive here, we're going to go ahead and launch Final Cut Pro 10. So, as I said before, this will work with the latest version, 10.1.4, and, of course, uh, a few older versions as well, but make sure you're in roughly that version for this to properly work. So, when we launch Final Cut Pro 10, it will, of course, launch into the local uh, library here. To double check this, you can go under Finder, hit Movies, and make sure the library name matches the one uh, that's shown under your library's list. And in this case, I've just named it Retina Solid State Drive, uh, just to make it a little bit more obvious uh, where this library is located. We're going to go ahead and, of course, change that. So, I've already emptied out my library. Of course, make sure you save everything you want uh, before you do this. So. The next step, we're going to go under uh, File, and we're going to hit Library Properties. Now, this will open up a little window here, which will allow us to modify the storage locations. Um, of course, we're going to change that to the external hard drive. So we're going to go ahead and choose, and we're going to select the hard drive, hit Choose, and we're going to do the exact same uh, with Media, Cache, and, of course, Backups. Now, Backups here, these are not necessary. However, I always recommend doing them uh, because it's just good to, uh, to have 
as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit choose. And we're going to hit OK. And as you can see, everything is now stored on the external drive. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually create the new library. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back under Files. And we're going to hit uh, Open Library, Others. And as you can see, the only one that it knows, of course, is the local one. But we're going to go ahead and hit New. And we're going to make a new library. So let's call this, um, for example, External uh, uh, Final Cut Pro 10. We'll just, we'll just name it that, just to make it, give it a little obvious name. So we're going to go ahead and hit Save. And as you can see, under libraries, we now have two libraries. We have the onboard retina, uh, basically your solid state uh, library, and we have the external library. Now, you can, of course, delete your onboard library. I will keep it, though, uh, just because it is good to have, say, you know, I don't have my external drive with me. I could still be able to edit on my local drive. But this way, um, I can quickly switch between the two. So let's go ahead and double check and make sure this works here. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and import a file here. So I have a, a simple video here laid out on my desktop. Uh, basically just my outro video. We're going to go ahead and import that. And we're going to make sure we create the event under the name uh, external Final Cut Pro 10. So let's name this one for now and make sure your files are copied as well. And then we're going to go ahead and import it. As you can see, under my external hard drive, we now have this clip. This is this basically means that we're completely editing and working off of the external drive. So if we go back into Finder here and double check that everything's worked, if we click on our Final Cut Pro 10 drive, as you can see, we should have folders similar to this. So we have your media folder, or sorry, your library folder right here. And we have your original media, which you can actually check here, which will have the outro, right? This is what we just imported. And as you can see, everything is saved and done right on the uh, external hard drive. So this basically is how you set up an external hard drive for Final Cut Pro 10. So from now on, every file that you import or uh, every uh, edit that you make will be saved on the external hard drive. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this helped you out. If you have any more further questions, be sure to let me know in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. At the end of this video, I have a few more tutorials that you may find interesting. And without further ado, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.